Our guest today is David Harris with RSM Associates Incorporated. David, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Wayne. Appreciate you coming in. Now, we want to talk about a meeting that was held here recently and probably uh, try and clear up some information uh, and just and nail this down about, about what uh, people who have received damage and who were injured by Hurricane Matthew and the resulting flooding from that, we want to try and clear the air about a lot of information uh, and what people can now do to try and get back to normal in the situation, right. perhaps, perhaps even as close to as they were prior to the hurricane and flooding. So where do we start with this? Uh, what are the different ways that, that, can, that people can be helped? And from where does that help come? Okay. The, the assistance and, and the recovery is considered short-term and long-term. Mm -hmm. Short-term, everyone is, uh, needs to register with FEMA, either at Disaster Recovery Center, online. They have a mobile app now. Uh, they've got a toll number that you can call. Uh, they have um, language services available if, if anyone needs it. Mm -hmm. That's really the trigger for everything that could happen afterwards, both short-term and long-term. So it's important, the first thing is to get with FEMA. Absolutely. And for some families um, who may have had damage but yet hadn't been flooded, they say, well, I may not need that. I'll just, you know, use some homeowners. Well, they, they still would need to uh, register with uh, FEMA if they wanted to be considered for the long-term assistance, would could, which could be either an elevation or a buyout. That a number of people also with flood insurance, and, and it's most people know that when it comes to that financial assistance after the hurricanes, if you do not have flood insurance, then the FEMA individual household grant assistance comes in that the people are applying mm -hmm. for. And if you have flood insurance, you use your flood insurance money to recover and to make the repairs and clean up. But even somebody with flood insurance needs to register with FEMA. It, it, believe it or not, there are situations where that individual family grant assistance can be used with somebody in flood insurance if flood insurance winds up being unable to help them recover. But more importantly, somebody with flood insurance that wanted to be considered in either the acquisition program mm -hmm. or the elevation program, they have to have registered with FEMA beforehand. And, and this is a decision, those programs aren't gonna be available till, till probably next year, and it's too late uh, when, when, when all that information comes out to register. They need, everybody needs to register now if you've had any, regardless, any damage. That's regardless right. Regardless of, of, of any damage at all, and whether you have flood insurance or not. Keeps your options open. Keeps your options open, register with FEMA. Now, what I keep hearing is that there are a lot of people, some people had flood insurance, most people didn't because we flooded in areas that nobody would ever have dreamed would flood. <laughs> wow. So, I mean, there was damage done and who would have thought? Uh, there was so much water. So, uh, so register with, with FEMA first. Now, let's break this down, uh, acquisitions uh, and, uh, and elevation. Now, elevation would be raising the, the, the structure off the ground, raising it up. So what are we talking about here? How is that done? Um, the, let's start with first, the, the process is going to be the same in terms of somebody wanting to, to have their property acquired or elevated, and that is the state will invite the county to submit applications mm -hmm. for acquisition elevation assistance. Family can select which of those two. Uh, the family would be provided an application form, there's certain information they would need to provide. That information is, is um, assembled by the county, submitted to the state. They then review it, and then of course it goes to the FEMA for approval. Okay, but so both are going to be in that process at the same time. That person who decided they want to participate in elevation, when that's approved, then they become the, the center of, uh, of how that project gets underway. So the decision, they first make, have to make a decision which way they want to go. Now you say acquisition, you're referring to just a, a buyout. That's correct. Where FEMA or the state or somebody pays for the property and, the, and then the, the property owner relinquishes ownership and moves to another location. Correct. Uses the proceeds from the sale to acquire another house. Acquire another house. Move somewhere else. Now that, right. But that, the proceeds from that sale must go to another house. They can't just take and go to Tijuana or anything. Actually, these days it is at, after closing, any of the um, restrictions or limitations that existed in years past mm -hmm. don't apply anymore. Really? When, when they receive the check and it's in their hands, mm -hmm. They leave it closing, that's it. There's not a tracking of them. There's not a decision as to what they do. 
So they can do uh, anything they want to do. Right. For a number of years at closing, they actually signed a certification that they wouldn't use the funds to acquire property back in a floodplain oh. huh. because it kind of goes yeah. against yeah. what FEMA <laughs> and the state's trying to do. I mean, right. you're, you're being bought out because you're in a floodplain, you take that money and move back in. Yeah. But um, they've eliminated that condition or restriction. So at closing, when they, when they receive that check, they're on their own. They, they then become just like any other citizen who has sold their property to a private individual. They can take that money and do what they want. They can buy, rent, buy a camper, motor home, um, go to Vegas, what, whatever they want to do, it is, it is their asset. They have mm -hmm. converted that real property into cash and, and uh, they're free to do with it what they want. So that's now, an, now keep in mind what I'm telling you are the guidelines that have been in place yeah. and with the uh, we're managing Hurricane Irene disaster now that's the way it was but with each disaster there is some fine-tuning tweaking and changing of some of those guidelines mm -hmm. so what I can tell you is first disasters 20 years ago restrictions oh, yeah. disasters as of uh, middle of uh, 2000 uh, up to 2011 with Irene they had taken those off We'll have to see what's in writing when it comes to so that. Still but, early, but typically, it's it becomes their funds, and that we just won't have those restrictions. Mm -hmm. Wow! All right, now that's that's a, a, a buyout or mm -hmm. an acquisition. Then the, on the other hand, we have the elevation. Yeah. How, how does that work? Let, let me if they decide. Go yeah, ahead. Let me put something down on the acquisition because a lot of people are, are sitting here and they they may be getting a little bit of assistance from uh, FEMA, barely enough to make the repairs. Yeah. The house is still in deplorable condition, and right. they're saying. Why pie, apply with them? I mean, my house isn't worth anything. I wouldn't buy it. Who would buy it? Well, the only way that an acquisition program can work, mm -hmm. and the objective is to eliminate entirely any chance of either property damage, uh, damage to, to personal property, or damage to lives in the future from a flooding event. At that, in that case, acquisition is a 100% foolproof mitigation activity. It's not going to happen again. The only way for that to work is FEMA, uh, uh, and this is this is FEMA regulation. The county is the one who hires the appraisers, the, attorney, the attorneys, the surveyors. The appraiser hired by the county is going to appraise that property at pre-disaster market value. So when the appraiser goes out, they will pick October 5th or 6th, in mm -hmm. other words, the day before any damage occurred in the state of North Carolina. The hurricane may have started in Florida, but the state will establish the date, that date. And the appraiser goes out and will appraise that property. It could be for some families, appraisals aren't done until next spring, next summer, next year. Doesn't matter because the value is still going to be as it was 1st of October, you know, 2016. Yeah. So they are not going to be penalized by the fact their house is damaged right. or that it's just really not a remarkable condition now. They will have the benefit of the value of that property prior to all the damage taking place, which is an incentive for them. And, and yeah. financially, in most cases, yeah. it's the only way they'd have the money to do it, to sell it and move somewhere else. So is it a 100% acquisition? I mean, if the house was worth $200,000, do they receive that amount of credit? The, the county is obligated by statute to offer the fair market appraised value as determined by that license appraiser. Okay. No more, no less. It's not a, um, uh, we're not buying a used car. Right. It's not where the county comes in, well, it's only, well we could save money, maybe mm -hmm. we could get them down to 185 or yeah. something. No, it is, appraisal comes in at 200, offer goes to them at 200,000. Now what's interesting is, and then it's like, okay, now what happens? I understand, okay, 200,000, well that sounds pretty good, but we, we've had properties that sold for even more than that in prior disasters. Owner says, I, I think it should be worth more, and, which is fine. All he's got to do, and at that point, he can take it or withdraw. Mm -hmm. If he wants, or third option, he can hire his own appraiser. That appraiser has to use the same standards and methodology as the county's appraiser. In other words, they have to be equal. But another appraiser can give a different opinion, even using the same appraisal standards. Uh, the homeowner has the appraisal done, it's furnished back to the county. If his appraisal is within 15%, okay, in the case of 200000 if it's within $230,000, right. the offer 
is immediately changed to 229, it says 229,000. That's within 15%. Right. There's no, um, no dispute, no haggling, or nothing. The program says take that appraisal less than 15%, make that the new offer, because guess what? That's what the owner has said is the value of his property. That's what we're going to offer him. Wow. Now, what if it comes back and the appraisal comes back at 18 or 20 percent? Let's say it comes back over 230,000. Mm. Um, then it's real simple. County hires a third, third appraisal. Now, the county will have paid for the first one. Owner paid for the second one. Right. The, owners, the county's going to pay for the third one. Third appraisal is done. When that appraisal comes in, it gets even simpler. Take each of the three appraisals divided by three. That becomes the offer, take it or leave it. That's it. There's no negotiating. There's no picking, picking at it. There's no appeal. There's no appraisal. It is purely, this is a voluntary program. The county's not required to buy it. The county doesn't have to buy it. And the homeowner doesn't have to sell it. Yeah, yeah. All the county's obligated to do is make an offer based on objective values. Mm -hmm. and, and that process I described is, is considered an objective process. So the owner can then take that uh, average of the so three average of the and say he can't go back to the one before, you know, can't because go back his, to, he can't go back to his because when it was over 15%, that became past. How do we treat the appraisals now? We then have to have the third. It becomes the average, okay. um, and and it's that step by now. At any point, homeowner can withdraw. First, first prayer, he is mm -hmm. second. Anytime, they can withdraw. They're free to. In fact, literally, the the voluntary participation is this, in this program is is so literal that we could be at closing. They could have the deed to transfer the property to the county and a pen in their hand, and decide not to sign it. And that's okay. Well, wow, this is all voluntary. It's all you voluntary. Don't have to do and, this. And, and when they say that, there's not any like hidden situations mm -hmm. or something comes back. It's totally voluntary. Um, and it allows a homeowner at each of those decision points to make a decision what's in their best financial interest. Right. It's, uh, I can't understand why someone wouldn't take advantage, but I'm sure there would have to be someone who would have a reason of some sort. So it'd have to be a pretty valid reason. But to be honest, it certainly it, sounds like it, it would be who yeah. one to take advantage of that. Yes, it, it, the, 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 there's only, the, well, there's a number, but the two primary reasons, if the owner is unable to provide clear title, okay. and I mean 100% clear yeah. title, yeah. there can't be any clouds of title, there can't, be, there, there can't be some judgment that the attorney can't resolve, mm -hmm. um, title insurance is going to be required on behalf of the, you know, the county as a purchaser, and if they cannot provide clear title, then um, the county is not able to purchase it. I mean, they just can't. And in fact, typically that's done at the, we do the title opinions first and the surveys match those two up. And before we get a lot further in, we, we identify if there could be a problem, notify the home. In some cases, homeowner not even aware of it. Okay. Um, they are given an opportunity to try to have it resolved. If they can't resolve it, then it's just over. We can't make an offer, can't buy it. It, it doesn't go anywhere. The other uh, situation is where this happens more frequently than, than title issues. Homeowner gets an offer, a, 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 a market value, reasonable offer that he's ex he thinks is, is, is valid, mm -hmm. and it's for $75,000, or it may be for $65,000. They may owe $45,000 on the property. When they purchase that property, they could afford the loan, that we're making the payments, now they're at the selling point. When that person walks away with $30,000, and that could have been 15 years ago, his circumstances now might not allow him to borrow that money back. He's not going to buy a safe, decent, sanitary piece of property for $40,000. Oh, no, He's no. not going to replace that property, that house, for $40,000. And so, in a lot of cases, the people are simply in a catch-22. Yeah. They want the offer, they want the buyout, they think it's reasonable, but financially, they can't make the deal work because what they're getting from a reasonable offer after subtracting mortgage and so forth, or any other liens they may have, doesn't leave them enough money to really 
purchase another piece of property and relocate. And, and so they're in a catch-22. Those, But the, that would be, you, you're right, when you're looking at how fair and objective the process is in order to get them that offer, it's like the, the FEMA in the state's been in over backwards mm -hmm. to try to make this happen. It, and the it's a high priority at FEMA and at the state level for acquisition. They do everything to make it work. But a person's financial situation is what they've got to be looking at mm -hmm. when they're looking at that offer. And if it works, fine. If it doesn't work, then they're just, so, they're, they're not able to participate. Not, yeah. not because they don't want to. Yeah. They, they, can't, can't. they can't afford it. So the alternative is elevation. Yes. Is that the only other alternative? Oh, except yes. just to do nothing? Yes. Yeah. You, want, you, you don't want to do nothing. Because no, you're right back where you, you right back where you started. <laughs> so elevation. Now, if you don't have a clear title and you have to go the elevation route, do you have to have a clear title at that point, or can you just have it done? Well, in the because um, I can't see how a title would come into play. Well, it, the, the once you're either in the acquisition program or the elevation program, you can't shift from one to the other. Okay. So let's say the guy in acquisition um, he either couldn't get clear title or he got the offer. And it's like I can't. I can't mm -hmm. make it work, can't afford it. Mm -hmm. How about give us some money to elevate? That's not the way it works. Uh -oh. The person makes the decision as to whether they want to stay or go. They're going to make the decision about whether to stay or go. If they want to go, there's a buyout, and hopefully it'll work for them. Mm -hmm. If they want to stay, then it's elevation. Mm -hmm. So those two don't cross. It, it's not like a separate track, yeah. and then it, there's a point in the future where they meet. So if you can't, if the acquisition doesn't work, you can't switch over. Correct. You're dead in the water. Correct. You can't do anything. Hmm. Wow. But for hundreds and hundreds of families, it works. It does work. I mean, and yeah. in fact, just to give you in Wayne County after Floyd, and 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 I'm not even sure these may be all the programs. There were over a, probably 150 individual residences purchased. There were another. 80 plus um, uh, apartments or um, rental mobile homes mm -hmm. or investor owner property that was acquired. All of those became uh, returned to their natural state and obviously none of those families um, were affected by Hurricane Floyd. Wow. Um, so it, it worked in that sense. Uh, but life's not perfect and in spite of a program that does everything it can it can't reverse a person's financial situation. Right. It can deal with the property, the house, the value, and giving full <coughs> benefit of that, but it just can't reverse if there's some other financial obstacles that, that the homeowner may have. I can tell you this though, that at, at this point in time, there's more low interest loan funds that would be available simply because of the market mm -hmm. than there's been at any time we've had a major disaster. This would be through the SBA? Well, yeah, it could be through SBA, it could be through um, uh, just um, standard mortgage lending. In other words, I'm telling you, the person had the mortgage and then he's got to, to buy something else, he's going to need to replace that mortgage. Mm -hmm. um, in the past, we were in situations where to do that, people were looking at a uh, you know, 6%, 8% interest rate. Mm. And they were sitting on a mortgage that could have been less. Well, in most cases now, the people are going to be able to get a mortgage that may be actually less than. But then they have to qualify. Things are different. Right. But So there are some, um, in, in terms of the evolution of, of the acquisition program, that one factor will help a number of families make that, um, make that deal work. Yeah. Because we're not talking about 8% interest rates seven six percent interest rates we're talking about much lower much so lower. maybe that maybe that would help but okay. but and then for those that aren't elevation elevation so what have we not covered that we do need to know about the oh just a, a real quick on the elevation it's mm -hmm. a fairly straightforward process um our the uh the county um again selects professionals to manage the program um and, and the key one, there, there'll be a project manager and then of course the project engineer that will design the foundations, specifications, plans, specs, floor plans, everything else, um, foundation diagrams, and, and um, to meet both the FEMA requirements and the state building code and bid that work. The engineer is going to be basically the, uh, 
uh, the, the supervisor of that activity, bids come in from qualified contractors that have done elevation work in the past, mm -hmm. reviewed, uh, engineer makes recommendation to the county board. Remember, this is still, it may be FEMA money goes through the state and the county, but it is, um, it, it, the county funds are procured and you still follow all the same steps you would if it was county money. Uh, the county approves it, and then of course the con there would be a contract between the homeowner and the um, and the contractor for the work. Um, typically, the um, elevation period it could be four months, five months, six months, depending on the complexity of the house. Um, and during that period, uh, obviously the body's going to be able to remain in the house because right. all the all the utilities are disconnected. Uh, it's not accessible. No, we actually have had people though at our public meetings to get started want to know, well, can't I just still continue to live in my house? <laughs> <laughs> and and the litany of reasons why, I mean, it take forever, but no, the answer is no. Real the answer is no. no. So um, how but it's paid. If, if they need to rent an apartment or rent a house somewhere, um, uh, the program provides an allowance that will, that will pay the rent wow. of that place. So they're going to be temporarily displaced they're going to find a place to rent and et cetera. And um, the program will, will pay for that. Now, it's not going to pay for their utilities. It's not going to pay transportation. It's not going to pay for their meals. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is not a per diem right, sort of arrangement. Allowance, is it? This is like, okay, your biggest expense that you're going to have is your rent, right. is the cost of the structure. And since all FEMA's doing is working with the structure, the, the house they have, mm -hmm. then that's how they equate it. All these other things, homeowners just going to have to you know, do what works well, for them. They would be buying those things anyway. They'd be paying gas for gasoline. They'd be buying food. Yeah, and, 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 and utilities. The, the utilities are disconnected. Now, and typically, utilities will work with the families on, if, if they're aware of the circumstances. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, yes, there is a minimum bill now in a lot of utilities. In, in some cases, for the, uh, the locally managed <laughs> <laughs> systems, um, They'll kind of waive that because they recognize what's going on just to kind of help. For other ones, uh, you know, your, your statewide utilities, and it, it's going to drop to a minimum, but that becomes their expense. So the contractor's going to bring in generators uh, to do their work. That's so, right. you so know, they don't utilities, need the utilities. Is, is, is not an issue. Right. The house gets uh, raised, permanent foundation, lowered, utilities reconnected, and then the uh, homeowner moves back to his home. Wow. So it all starts with FEMA. Go to FEMA first and file with FEMA, register with FEMA, and they can tell you from that point what you need to do. Now, will the, will the homeowner be contacted after that, or does the homeowner need to contact somebody? In terms of the at, at the very beginning, after after FEMA, will FEMA will FEMA contact the homeowner and offer the uh, offer the the either or, mm -hmm. either uh, acquisition or or elevation. The, um, the the FEMA's role in that in that recovery where they're when they're registering. Is simply that a, that financial assistance that's going to come directly from FEMA, mm -hmm. and, and of course referrals to SBA and, and et cetera, and whether it's temporary housing assistance. The HMGP, the long-term recovery, is going to come through the state and the county. Okay. And in essence, the the state's going to establish you know when the time frame is going to be to receive the application. The county then is going to work with the homeowners to collect. That's when they will be contacted, and and and. Every time we've ever had a project in 20 years, we set up meetings, you know, anywhere, fire stations, churches, yeah. wherever they may be, and in, invite as many people as possible, give them that information. Other ones, and we've, we already have now at the Disaster Recovery Center a pre-application form that will help us establish contact with everyone that signs in there. Now, there are people that have registered with FEMA online or by phone. Um, we we will be requesting that the state at least get from FEMA a list, if it's just names and addresses, mm -hmm. of the people that had registered, compare it to the list that we have from the ones from our pre-apps. We want to be able to contact those so that they are aware, because when they're registering with FEMA online or by, by phone, that's that's cleanup, that's repair, that's that's recovery. FEMA at that point doesn't know which community in the United States is going to participate in an acquisition elevation program. Mm -hmm. They don't know when, they don't know to what degree, that, you know, at that point. So it's really not their role to try to explain that to the person. 
it's the role of the state and the county to be able to provide that information to the uh, homeowners as that process unfolds. We, the county's been proactive in trying to um, identify as many as possible mm -hmm. so that we can contact those ones at Disaster Recovery Center. Uh, we will try to obtain a list from the state for other ones that may have registered. It gets a little difficult because they can sort and so forth. A lot of that information is, is privileged information. Right. Um, but of course, the county only wants names and addresses, phone numbers, so maybe that'll work. And that, but even that type of effort, you still have meetings, you still put notes together. You want to make sure everybody is at least aware mm -hmm. the process has started, what they need to do, what they need to provide. Because there's some things that they'll need to actually provide, like at the at the disaster recovery center, you right. need to bring. Social Security card, need to your bank account, right. you know, this list, short list there's of things. List, yeah. Well, for an application to be submitted for either the buyout or the elevation, um, we would need things such as the, um, and of course the county will have some of these, uh, the tax uh, parcel information, mm -hmm. the county will get it. The uh, substantial damage letter, the, the assessment of their property they get from the building inspector, counties are going to maintain those. Um, the state is, uh, will also require a copy for the ones with flood insurance. There's a one-page um, sheet in their policies called the um, uh, flood declarations page. Mm -hmm. They would need to have that, and that information provides, you know, what's the degree of their coverage. It ensures they've got, um, uh, you know, that they could, they're, uh, they'll file a claim, and you, they can follow up, make sure it's a file a claim. So having that little bit of information. And for some people that have an elevation certificate, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's required for people building in a floodplain, um, if they can provide that, that's also helpful. So there's a couple of things that, that um, they'll need to help the county to put the information together, submit to the state for review. Okay, so after uh, initial uh, contact with FEMA, then the county or, or the state will contact the homeowner and is that right? They just Correct. wait for that? They don't have That's to right. call anybody? No, All right. they, they don't have to call anybody at this point. And we recognize that patience is, yeah. is going to be it's a, a long process, a, a, a difficult thing yeah. for, for everybody because of all the other stresses. But at this point, I think the key is for the residents in Wayne County, and that includes City of Goldsboro, mm -hmm. the commitment has been made that the county and the city are going to apply for hazard mitigation funds for acquisition or elevation. All right. Now, there are actually some communities haven't made that decision yet that have been impacted by and by uh, Matthew. But here, they have. they have. It was done from day one. They started with it, and it was simply a matter of knowing that, then then for the citizens at least, it's sort of like the, the counties and the cities got your back mm -hmm. and um, try to do what you can with your insurance, your FEMA, repair, mm -hmm. get back in, do your cleanup. Um, but you're not going to be left out, and the county will make every effort, you know, through notices and meetings to, to, okay. to make them aware of it. David Harris, we are out of time. Boy, that was some, that was a lot of information. And uh, is there a, is there a, aside from FEMA, is there someone that if people needed more information, they could go somewhere talk to somebody about it? Well, they uh, can. I guess uh, the best place to go is FEMA, though, wouldn't, wouldn't it be? On on the acquisition on or acquisition the, or elevation? No, no, FEMA. not FEMA. At at this point, that is now a state. It, okay. It's FEMA money. Yeah. It's a state program. A state program. That uh, the money is going to be allocated directly to the county, and and really that role is going to be through the county. Now right. the person can call uh, the uh, planning department. Chip Crumpler. Yes. Is 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 active in assembling that information, putting it together. Chip's familiar with the uh, program. He was here during Hurricane Floyd. Mm -hmm. um, People can uh, call uh, my office. We are working now with the county on, on uh, making sure we um, uh, don't miss anything in this mm -hmm. process that, that the, uh, uh, the county can participate in or the citizens can be aware of. Um, and, and at this point, that, that's, that's, about that, it. that's what we have. Now, when the application process starts, there will be a central point people be able to call in, get information, mm -hmm. follow up, hey, did you receive uh, this copy and that sort of, sort of thing. So right. when that, and quite frankly, Wayne, we are hoping that process is going to start this month. All right. I, I recognize almost half the month is gone, but and Thanksgiving's at the end of it. But we are hoping that 
somehow that there will be a beginning of that process, start collecting information, and then maybe uh, soon thereafter we would have a much uh, more detailed picture of uh, deadlines, mm -hmm. forms, and it's a long things process. to fill out. Long yes, process. yes. Long. It, it will take uh, uh, probably a, a month or longer, um, you know, November, December, mm -hmm. before a lot of that would, uh, you know, be able to assemble and put together. But right. at least it's underway. Yep. At least there's a commitment to do it. Okay, we're out of time. Uh, David Harris with HSM and Associates Incorporated here in Goldsboro. I appreciate it. David, thank you okay. so much for all that information. Sure thing, Good Wayne. Good stuff. Thank you.